Okay, we are back and we're gonna go fast forward through the blow drying part because this is quite boring and it can really add to the time of the video. And I'm sure most of you know, or at least if not all, you know how to dry out the bird. So as you can see, um, without before I, um, I installed the bird on the permanent perch, I like to have it on top of the chair or on a vice grip or, or not on the permanent perch, somewhere else, sometimes even having it on, like holding the feet by one arm, by one hand and then trying to fix the feathers and preen the feathers uh, up to a degree before I put it on the permanent perch. So if you if you notice here what I'm doing, I'm pushing all the feathers up. This uh, this allows you to see which of the feathers that have been caught underneath. Um, basically, the top feathers have been pushed underneath the um, feathers below them. So this allows you to put the shingles back on the proper way because uh, it really shows if you don't spend the time and if you don't spend the uh, if you don't give it the, the, the proper attention that it needs you will realize at the end you know you might have posed your hawk bird fairly good but it the feather grooming it doesn't look necessarily nice so I like to do the same thing with the brass feathers I push everything up that allows me to see where everything is and I can bring every piece of skin and all groups of feather tracks back into where they belong. This is not something that you see from the video and you learn right away. It just needs a lot of practice plus a lot of studying of where the feather tracks belong on a bird's skin. So now I have my permanent perch ready. I'm trying to put the two holes for the legs and um, I kind of like you know, measure them already how far apart they need to be based on the pose and the slope of the branch. We put them on and we bend the wires from underneath, make sure that the talons and the feet and the toes and everything is looking properly. I don't pull them too hard. I don't, and I don't lose them, let, them, uh, let them sit there loose. So I just bend them crooked and I staple them and then uh, later on I will cover up this staple with some scenery material. So the hawk is on the permanent perch and we're going to pose the hawk for the final time before we set it aside for drying. So basically the owner of this bird asked for a simple nice perched bird on, to, on a branch to hang on the wall. So it's going to be fairly simple as you can see just on a simple branch and the rest of it is going to follow with it and um, I, I do like simple mounts anyway. As you can see when I'm posing it's quite difficult to explain because uh, I don't necessarily follow the same step on every single mount that I do. But if you notice, one thing is always the same. I do not try to pose the bird from one body part to another part. Um, like what I mean is I don't try to um, pose one wing, finish it, and go to the next wing, finish it. That's not how I do it. I go around the mount and I do a little bit everywhere and then after about an hour or two of grooming, posing, moving the legs and wings and the neck and until uh, I find the final pose that I want to leave the bird on, you will realize that I'm working on all parts a little bit at a time and um, after a couple hours uh, the bird starts to take its shape. And there's been many times, sometimes I have to actually show it in my videos too, there's been many times that I pose a hawk or an owl, for example, in more of a relaxed uh, position and then I'm, I'm almost done, I'm almost moving the last feathers here and there, trying to do the last grooming and I step back about 20 feet away, look at it, 
uh uh I don't like it I go and change everything and that literally adds hours of work into my uh, hours of labor into my work but I don't care because the mount needs to leave the bird needs to leave my shop the way I want it so I've never tried to shortcut any work because it's gonna take longer um, I could have easily mount some of my birds within half the time that I usually spend on them but I choose not to because uh, I'm going to live with that picture and that, you know, memory for forever. I have it in my portfolio and I want it to look right. Proportionately, anatomically, everything, it has to look right. So now, um, if you can get yourself one of these stands that I do have, uh, mines are planted into the ground. Um, it can be planted on top of a table. The point is as long as your stand has um, gives you the ability of turning the mount, that would be a lot easier instead of having a solid uh, stand that um, you cannot you know tilt the bird uh, because of it. So because it really helps, I uh, basically tilt them back and forth, use the gravity to help me. Um, keep the feathers where I want them or keep the wings and tail where I want them before I do the final posing. As you can see I'm, I'm, I'm working on the back again and then I'll jump around and go work in the front and a little bit at a time um, the, the, um, the shape and pose that is desired by myself is coming to reality. Yeah, Swainson's hawks are fairly cool looking hawks actually, even even the juvenile. And their juveniles, they can quite vary from one to another one. Some of them are, um, I have one in the freezer that belongs to a lady that is quite buffy on the breast with very, very few spots. And I have done other ones that I think you can find them on my website gallery that the breast is full of spots and markings and um, they're both juvenile Swanson's hogs but they're quite different there is a pair of them actually nesting close to my shop and I do enjoy looking at them in summertime when they're when their youngs are fledging Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the carding. I like to do the tail first. And um, what I'll use usually is a piece of cardboard, a little bit of a tape, the painter's tape, and uh, a couple of pins around. And uh, I don't want to press them. Um, I don't want. I, I don't like to press the tail between two cards too hard that makes the tail flat. I don't like to do that because birch tails are not flat. They have a little bit of a curve to them. We are coming to, slowly coming to the end of this part of the video too. This part was basically showing mostly about grooming and posing the hawk. As you can see, the wingtips are still drooping, but the hawk is taking its shape. So it's just a matter of holding those wingtips up. Um, it'll bring it way closer to reality while I'm still grooming feathers on the wing and the shoulder and everything. See, the reason I do not like to push my wing wires all the way to the tip is because it usually creates problem with the bending um, on the last part of the wing. It's much easier 
not to put any wire in there because that wire is not going to support anything and um, is basically um, with a couple of cardboards and tapes and pins you can keep the wing tips in the right direction in place that you like and you don't need to worry about any wire um, creating any problem. Okay, this is pretty much it. I'll let you watch the rest of the video. Also, at the end, I have the pictures of the finished product. If you enjoyed the video, if you liked the video, I would really appreciate if you subscribe and if you like the video and um, also share it with your friends or whoever you think that uh, is going to enjoy and benefit from the video. We'll be producing more videos and sharing it more and more every week with you guys. Thank you very much again. Have a good day. We'll next you. We'll see you next, either next week or maybe again this week. You never know. Have a good one.